Yesterday I was talking about uh, Hillary Clinton trying to out-socialize the socialist Bernie Sanders. I ended up putting that up as a YouTube video. Now, generally, YouTube videos, I've got a few that have uh, you know done pretty well. They get into the triple digits. I think a lot of our people uh, who, who listen to this program in the morning don't have a lot of time to go back and do a rewind. And yet, I, I, I see some occasionally. I did a video, put up a video. It was me discussing Louis Farrakhan and some of his threats to wipe out white America a few weeks ago. And that got a lot of heat. Uh, a lot of people apparently sat down and watched that. And then had another video that was very similar because it got picked up by uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is a joke in itself. And uh, that got a lot of hits too as well because of that. The other day I got, a, I got a message from a running back from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers fuming about something I said in one of my videos. So I guess they're getting some reach. You just never know where they're going to end up. I put up that video about Hillary Clinton probably sometime mid-morning yesterday, late morning, before noon. I got out of bed this morning and it had 94 hits and I'm thinking, who is, who's watching that? And then I came into work. Half an hour later, I checked it after I got here to work, and it had 110 hits. So obviously, people out there agree with that, or at least they're forwarding it to friends to try to make a point. Clinton, by the way, according to what I was reading at the Washington Examiner, Sarah Westwood, the writer, she has been out talking about her financial plan and how we need to... She, she does not use the word Wall Street, though, when she is out there talking about how we need to change the playing field. Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, is talking about hamstringing some of the nation's largest banks, and he's calling them out by name. Well, why isn't Clinton doing the same? The writer says five of those banks have donated at least $100,000 and as much as $5 million to the Clinton Foundation, and number six, Wells Fargo, has given a smaller contribution to the charity. So in other words, these are all Hillary Clinton's big donors. <laughs> She's not going to go out there and say, well, we've got to control these people. For all of you lefties out there who think that Republicans are running around sipping expensive champagne, thinking about ways they can do you in, maybe you ought to think about that for a moment. There's, there's a reason, and, and even Rolling Stone, a very liberal magazine, backs this up. There is a reason that Goldman Sachs is called Bank of the Democrats. 935, it's 53. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. On News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We have a caller with us, and you're on the air. Hi, Bill. How are you this morning? Wonderful. What's up? Uh, I just wanted to give some follow up on the refugee situation that we know of going on in the community as far as a perspective from the churches. And because uh, we're seeing an influx of more of those type, as far as me being a pastor, of them coming to us for help. And we've had training from CSI, uh, the Refugee Center, coming in and asking us, you know, the refugees have this being given to them from the federal government. We're taking care of them. They shouldn't have to be coming to you to get help. And we're seeing just more influx. Doesn't that refute everything the newspaper well, it, it, says about it how successful I, I've this is? I've been silent listening to you for weeks, and I, I've gotten fed up with it. I just, it's ridiculous what's going on. They're not being integrated into the society. They're not culturally uh, becoming Americans, and they're not going to be. And what's frustrating is you'll get them working over here at Chapani, or you'll get them out on the dairies. They'll do some work. And because they've been in in uh, refugee camps in the other countries they've been in for so long, they're not for, for years and haven't had to do anything. Now you put them in this workload and they can't hack it. They get fired. So they go back to the refugee center out to see a sign. They said, look, you signed a contract with us. We've given you the federal help you're going to have. You're on your own. So now they want the churches to help. I saw a photograph someone sent me uh, a while back, and somebody managed to go photograph a, a housing complex where these people are st are stashed or stored away right. with the cracked walls and uh, plumbing issues. Uh, I was looking it over, and I thought, oh, my gosh, they are putting these people at nearly third-world conditions because right. you know, the least they had probably a clean tent where they happened to be before they came here. Uh, people are taking advantage of them. Again, people are making money off their presence, and we can't lose sight of that, that, you know, this is not about us being angry and, and mean and nasty with them. 
This is about some serious concerns about how they're going to live when they get here. Right. And like I say, we just, we just can't handle the load. I can't handle load now. And uh, we're, we're trying to do the best we can to, to help out. But, yes, yeah, I can't even cover the congregation I got now that's born and raised here. Why do you suppose we, we can't get anyone to come forward and really tell the truth about this? I don't know. That, that's what's frustrating to me, because what went on out there to see us sign that meeting, and I didn't go. I don't have the time to chase around doing this or the city council and that kind of stuff, but they, somebody ought to just know that, hey, we, we just can't handle it. And, and when we were told this refugees, they've been coming 300 a year to uh, Twin Falls, when we got trained from the refugee center, they've been doing that since '78. You start adding that up, guys. That's a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of very oh. needy people. Yeah. I thank you very much thank for you. the telephone call. You know, and, and 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 one thing that I thought about as he was uh, talking with me, there's a man who tells people every week, if not more frequently, that you've got to be, you, you can't hide things from the Lord or your fellow men. You've got to come out and be as upfront and transparent about this as you possibly can. So why do we have so many people in government who simply are not, well, look, I've been dealing with politicians since before I even started work in media, uh, way back in uh, the middle of the 1980s. I was working on some campaigns before that and meeting various politicians and the like. I realized a lot of them, you know, their brainwaves, uh, polit- politicians' brainwaves often match up exactly with uh, with the brainwaves of sociopaths. It's a true story. I mean, I saw the research on that a few years ago. Look, folks, sociopath, politician, or just a regular guy, someday you're going to have to answer for your actions. And if you're doing this just so you can make a buck at the expense and the suffering of others, tell you what, trying to get through that narrow gate, it's not going to be easy. Bill Colley with you. It's three or 940 54 Wednesday mornings on the program between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, we have a medical discussion. We do this every week. It's called Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. We're often joined in studio by Dr. Jonathan Tripp or one of the doctor's associates, and his staff is growing. They're always looking for new patients, and in fact, because of that, he's often looking for, well, new nurse practitioners, various people in the office who can assist, physician assistants. Uh, Those type of people are really, really in need. And so we wanted to just share that with you. But we sit down with one of the professionals on a weekly basis, and we have a discussion about usually we pick a topic related to health, and we invite your telephone calls too as well. But it's an opportunity, if you're interested, to give us a telephone call, and you get it won't cost you a thing. You get a little advice, or maybe someone will point you in the direction you need to go. And sometimes it could just be a lifesaver. So we want you to tune in and listen to us 8.30 to 9 o'clock on Wednesday mornings. And remember, the doctor's office is located on Fillmore Street in Twin Falls, directly across from the main post office up there on the north side. And remember as well, life's too short not to feel good. I got a couple of things I wanted to mention before we wrap up the week. And, and so I'm going to deviate a little bit from my, my planner here. Talking to a, a church pastor in just the last few minutes. I wanted to get to this uh, sometime this week, and we didn't get a chance. You're, you're aware that the state of Oklahoma has been told it has to move a Ten Commandments monument from state property. Now, if you look around the U.S. Supreme Court and you look up at all the carvings, do you realize there's a carving of Moses up there? Moses the lawgiver? If you also stop and think about it, all of the laws that we have in the Western world pretty much come down from those early biblical laws and then have just spread through our culture. So yes, the laws that we we pretty much live with today are based on a Judeo-Christian faith. That's 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 not I'm not making that up. That's how that has come about. That's why we have such a we don't have kings anymore who go around saying, "All right, I don't like what you said or how you looked at me. I'm going to boil you in oil." We don't do that because of that. So this 10 commandments monument had been sitting apparently for many, many years on state property, and someone came along and said, nope, got to go. Can't have that there. Because their argument is you're, 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 you're setting up a state religion, even though no one is going around saying, you must go to a Christian church. Do you hear me? We'll drag you. Or if you don't, we'll put you in the stocks. That's not happening. The governor of Oklahoma, Mary Fallon, is talking about this, and she wants to have a change in the state's constitution that would allow 
the monument. Now, in the early days of this republic, even though the federal government did not have an established religion, states did not have to worry about that. States could have an established religion. Now, many of them ended up changing their own uh, constitutions over the years, and that's why we don't see that. This is a comment from Mary Fallon, but also following her, you're going to hear from the representative in Oklahoma of the uh, Anti-Christian Licentious Union, better known as the ACLU. Uh, And contrast their comments, if you will, for a moment. We're going to let the people of Oklahoma decide this issue. They don't have the most basic attributes of their history right here, and they seem to not care that they don't have them right. What basic attributes of history? That most of the people who settled Oklahoma were Christians? Likely true. Uh, They weren't coming here uh, practicing the Baha'i faith, or they weren't animists, or they they weren't practicing Islam, they weren't practicing Buddhism. Uh, Yes, they were generally Christians that came to Oklahoma. When did the American Christian or anti-Christian licentious union, known as the ACLU, stop defending people's rights and instead attacking people? Because I bring this up. Who is hurt by seeing that monument as they go by? Oh, it made me fall over and I had a grand mal seizure and it challenges my atheism. And I drooled all over myself. That might have something else to do with uh, perhaps your makeup versus seeing that monument. Or perhaps because there's some sort of demon within you, when you see a monument like that, it, 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 it frightens that demon to no end. It's 947. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You remember that story about the cross in the desert? It was on federal land, and people said it's got to come down. And it was put up there to honor American veterans. And yet you had all of these people the same argument. No, oh, I, I drive by, and I, I start throwing up and vomiting, and I can't drive when I see it because somebody somewhere is believing in God, and they shouldn't. Got about a minute before Mike Gallagher. You're on the air on Top Story. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Morning. Yeah, hey, listen, uh, I'm just going to make a comment regarding uh, the Times News on, uh, on Wednesday about the troubling male Muslims on alert. Did you hear about that? You know, my first thought about that was, why do we have to have an investigation of somebody getting junk mail? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, as far as it goes, it's putting them out there now is, is they're the victims here. So whereas they're, they're looking and now they're categorizing the Bosnian refugees in there, too, that are the Muslim faith, which we is, and I'm a Christian, and we know and we realize that. But this, the news media, the, the Times News, is Titona Dunlap. This part, part is uh, when she talked about Pastor Sharam Hadian. I've been to three of his seminars, and when he opens up, the first thing he says is, we love the Muslims, it's Islam. And that point needs to be stressed, I think, and it just the uh, Times News just continually pushing this hate. What What is going to happen? A friend of mine raised the question the other day when, of course, first of all, the Bosnians, they're technically Muslims, but they're I wouldn't say they're at all like some of the... Uh, folks from other parts of the world. They're quite quite a bit more westernized. But what is going to happen when the first Mormon missionaries start showing up at their doors because Mormons are commanded to go out and do this work? Or how about the Jehovah Witnesses? What's going to happen? Are we going to be told that they can no longer do that because it might offend these people? And you know what? That's exactly where it's leaning to in this nation. You know, I mean, look at the, you know, like you said before I've heard you, you know, as we, we look at this president of what, when he gets on his soapbox, you know, what he's saying, and also it's brought forth in the people that still bring up the topic of a Muslim president. Well, if they look into the law of what Muslims believe and what Islam teaches, is if your father is Muslim, you are automatically Muslim, and that's just their law, so it's not that difficult to find out. Hey, I thank you much for the telephone call. Yeah, somebody at the newspaper ought to go do some research. Oh, but that might require a little extra time, and you can't hang around downtown chewing on a salad somewhere with a long lunch. Gallagher is coming up in a moment. Mike Gallagher, not the comedian. Although the comedian would be quite funny, too, as well. And maybe even serious. Mike Gallagher brought to you exclusively by the financial advisors at Waddell and Reed in Twin Falls. Telephone number 736-6563. As uh, Gallagher was mentioning that, I was thinking about the mayor of Jerusalem, who's pretty much said, uh, we discussed that a few minutes ago, pretty much said the same thing. It's 954. Bill Colley with you wrapping up this week. Our top story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 54 on our way to a temperature probably 84 today, so we still have a considerable warm up ahead of us. 
God willing, if the creek don't rise, they allow me to do this all over again on Monday morning. I never take anything for granted, if you will. I mean, I always I always try to keep in mind that uh, by the grace of uh, of God, you know, I'm doing this, and things can change rapidly in life, and sometimes they do when you get thrown a curveball. So I always like to mention that before the end of a program, if I have the opportunity. We have a caller with us. I think we've got a caller. It might be one of those beep, beep, beeps. Aha, I knew it was. Sometimes the phone does a rollover on me. You're up next, and you're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX. Well, thanks. Uh, so, I, you know, I really love Mike Gallagher during the morning, but when you repeat his radio show from yesterday to today, is that so we get the same message? Or Can I tell you something? That feeds down sure. from the network. That feeds down from the network. So if Mike Gallagher has the day off, they will refeed an earlier earlier version. I got nothing really? to do with it. Oh, bummer. I was going to b- blame you. Come on. Well, that's how it works. I do a radio show. The technical stuff is beyond me. I appreciate that one. Hey, thank you much for the telephone call. We have another caller joining us. You're up on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Good morning. Morning. Um, you know, on the subject of the um, refugees coming in, several years ago when they were bringing in the Bosnians and the Serbians and the Croatians, I'll just call them Eastern Europeans. Um, I was a bail bondsman, and there was a real increase, it was great for business, um, in arrests of um, mostly young men. And um, one of the things that I heard over and over and over again from the families was how dissatisfied they were with coming here. Um, I heard horrendous stories of what they they lived through back there and people they lost, but they really looked down on us as being provincial. They called us a village. You know, they, they talked about how they had a proud heritage hundreds of years old, and we were really excited about being, so, you know. So how did they end up here if things are so swell where they were? Well, that's just it. They weren't real swell, but they really had no clue what they were coming to. And they did not, they, they thought our laws were puny. They didn't think that because they were from over there, they didn't think that they needed to abide by our rules and our standards of living. Uh, they really looked down on our standards of living. A refusal uh, to they, assimilate. Pretty much. <laughs> Uh, you know, thank you for the free lunch. Now I'm going to tell you how you should run your country. And and what this poor, excuse my French, um, rules and people and standards of living we have. <laughs> yeah, I and can they imagine. Also, they, the and they also talked, one, one of the things that they were angry about, too, is they were promised certain things. And then basically they got here, the CSI refugee program kind of, dropped them off, said, here you go. And they had no place to go back to. I still think that a lot of them don't realize, and I thank you for the call, don't realize just how good things are, despite what this country's gone through. And yeah, it isn't It isn't the same place that I, thank you for the call. I grew up in the 1960s and 70s, and let me tell you, this was a wonderful country to grow up in. And a lot of changes have happened that I'm not happy about, and I'm sure you feel the same way. But I'll tell you what, it is still a damn sight nicer than what you're going to encounter in the Balkans or in Syria or in Iraq or in a good good portion of Asia or especially in just about all of Africa. Oh, let's say all of Africa. Rush Limbaugh is coming up next following the news. And again, they're ingrates. That's all we can say. Have a great weekend, everyone.